morning and welcome to worship. Good morning. Good morning. It's a special welcome to any of you who are visiting or returning after a while. It's a great joy to be able to gather and worship together. Special welcome also to those joining us on Facebook and who will be watching us on YouTube. As we gather this morning, may the Spirit of the Lord walk within us. As we gather, may we glorify the Lord. And as our hearts begin to worship, may we be blessed because we can. We begin our worship by singing my favorite hymn, number 304, I Come With Joy. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
the strength of all who put their trust in you. Mercifully accept our prayer. And because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture.
holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on your way to the court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Tell your word to be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I don't know whether I should ask you which passage I should preach on. Nicole <laughs> <laughs> Charlie was telling me his He's glad he is not preaching. <laughs> and indeed, all the passages provide uh, interesting teachings. And so I went back and forth saying, which one shall I talk about? And I decided to talk about all of them. So come with me. I hope I don't confuse you that actually you can see a theme uh, developing as we walk through all the passages. The first passage reminds us that our, we have the freedom to choose, but our choices have consequences, positive or negative. Moses tells this to the people of Israel, that you are going to the promised land and you have a choice to 
to love God and obey God and hold on to the things I've been teaching you, or to choose the gods of the people in that land. But he does something interesting also, which is controversial in these days. He tells them what to choose. And in our day and age, that's controversial. People say, no, don't, don't tell me what to do. I know what to do. And I say with Moses that it's actually good to advise your friends. Advising your friends about better choices is not a bad thing. It's not disrespect. It's actually loving. So Moses tells the people he loves, the people of Israel, he says, choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days. Good advice is good. We should do it. We should never be afraid. And it's not disrespectful to advise people wisely, to advise your friend wisely, unless the advice is bad. But if it's good advice, you have no reason to be afraid to advise one you love. The psalmist lays out the benefits of making right choices and prays for the grace to make the right choices. Why? Because even when we know we don't always make the right choices, even though we know the right choices. So he says in verse 1 and 2, Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe, the, his, who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts. He knows that. And I believe we can agree with him. I hope we can agree with him. And then verse 5 he says, Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. He's praying and hoping that he can continue making the right choices. The letter to the Corinthians is an interesting one. The context is the very beginning for the past three or four weeks we've been reading from this first letter of, uh, uh, of Paul to the Corinthians. And he is talking about how they are living their lives as Christians. In the first chapter, he is telling them that he thanks God for them because God has given them everything they need. But then he says, but I have a problem, a problem with you. And in this part we, we read in chapter 3, he continues with that problem. He says that they are, even though they have all the gift, they lack nothing in the gift, they have all the gifts they need, spiritual gifts, but they are not living as mature people. And he says, the reason I know you are immature is your jealousy and quarreling. And quarreling may not be a terrible thing, <laughs> but it is more so about what you're quarreling about. And they are quarreling, as I've said before, about the people who are administered in their church. And some were saying we belong to Apollos, we others we belong to Paul, others we belong to Cephas, who is Peter, and they kept fighting over that and could not agree on anything. And he said, that is immaturity. You need to grow up. The writer to the Hebrews says that they need to be teachers by now, but yet they are still behaving immaturely. Unfortunately, that still happens today. People who are born in the church been in the church 20 years fighting over small things 
I hope, I've not seen that yet at Holy Trinity. <laughs> I hope we never get that law fighting over things that really don't matter. And so he urges them to grow up. Then the big one, the gospel reading. Some of you are wondering, what is he going to say about this? And actually, it is very simple. It is very simple. Jesus is building on what he said last week. He said, I did not come to, to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And what is the law? So he expounds on the law. He begins saying, this is what you are dealing with. Murder is not stabbing or shooting somebody. Even saying they are a fool. <coughs> Taking away their dignity <coughs> is like murder. And he goes on and touches all subjects. He talks about anger. If you are angry at somebody, it's like murder. Because that anger could actually lead to physical murder. But character, we have in our languages what we call character assassination. Is that a common phrase here? That is murder. And he goes on and talks about adultery. And he says adultery is not just the physical act, but even looking at somebody with lust is adultery and goes on and touches on he talks about divorce he talks about swearing and whatever and so what is the point is he trying to make the point is that when you look at the law and its full implications and meaning none of us passes we are all in trouble you could say maybe i am not a murderer but then you realize, oh, I am, <laughs> I have. You could say I'm not an adulterer, and then you say, oh, Jesus is saying, no, hold on. And the other thing, swearing. So when we fail, then that's where the Christian message comes in, the good news of the gospel. Then Paul writing to the Romans in chapter 3 verse 23 said, All, all of us, you and me and them, have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. That's the status we are all in, all of us. And if we have all sinned and fallen short, then we need help. We need mercy. We need forgiveness. Some of you may know about a small booklet, uh, just a, a little brochure called The Four Spiritual Laws. And when we used it for evangelism, uh, we, when you got to that point, you said, then what? If we all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, then what? Should we go hang ourselves? <laughs> No, Jesus says, I have come to fulfill the law. John the Baptist pointed at him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's why I said that hymn uh, is my favorite hymn. Forgiven, loved, and free. That's where Jesus comes in. And he says, I have come to make it possible for you to be reconciled with God and with your neighbors. It is now possible to make right choices. But even when we make the wrong choices, there is a way out. The good news, the reason I will die a Christian is because Christianity offers me a way out. <laughs> Other religions say you have to meet this and this and this and this. African traditional religion that my parents were born in 
would say you need to give a, a chicken, then need to, they say they want a goat, then they want a cow, and then they want another cow, until you've run out of the cows and you sell your land, until you've run out of the land. Krishna just says, just come, come. There is a way out. And that is saying, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I fail. I have no other argument. One of my favorite hymns is that I have no other argument. I have no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Anyone knows that hymn? I have no other argument, I have no other plea, it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. So on a day like this, I can come and say, love, I come with joy, forgiven loved and free. That's what Jesus means when he says, I came. Not to abolish the law. Many of us would wish there was no law, but he came to fulfill the law. St. Paul writing to the Corinthians in his second letter says an interesting thing, very important thing. This, in verse 17, chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, he says, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Then verse 18, he says, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. That once we've been reconciled to God, then we can tell others about it. So they don't have to live the rest of their lives feeling guilty or share or shame or denial, because that's another way people deal with it. They say, no, I'm no sinner. I, this is not a sin, this is not a sin that you can actually admit that um, you, you are wrong, that you, you made the right choices, that you often fail, but there is forgiveness and mercy. And he says, once we've experienced that, we need to tell others. In 1984, August 26, I experienced that reconciliation, and I've never stopped telling people for our sake, verse 21, God made the one who knew no sin to be sin, that is Jesus, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So what is the takeaway from the readings this morning? It is in, that in Christ Jesus, and that's the difference really that the Christian message a brain. Many people say, all oh, religions are wonderful, and yes, I agree, they have a lot of truth to tell. But what is unique about Christianity is that Jesus brings forgiveness and offers us help through the Holy Spirit. We've been studying the Holy Spirit uh, at our adult Sunday school. And that's the difference, that in Jesus, we are reconciled to God. Through the Holy Spirit, we are able to actually grow up, that it is possible to overcome jealous and unnecessary quarreling, to make right choices. In Jesus, what seems impossible is made possible. Let us pray. Lord, thanks you for your word this morning for reminding us that our choices have consequences but thank you that we can make the right choices and that when we fail to make the right choices 
you forgive us. You invite us to repent and you forgive us. How I pray even this morning that those who are guilty, who feel guilty because of the wrong choices they've made, that they may know your forgiveness even now, right now this morning. How I pray that those of us struggling with choices, we may have the power, the grace to make the right choices. And most important to thank you that you've loved us and you forgive us and you set us free. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. church and for the world, that all people may shine with the radiance of Christ, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks and pray for the church throughout the world, and for all those ordained particular ministries for the building up of the body of Christ, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Greg, our bishop, Justin, our bishop-elect, Samuel and Janice, our priests, Charlie, our deacon, and all other ministers, that they may stand fast in the one faith to which we all have been called. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks and pray for our parish family, our clergy, our vestry and ministry team leaders, our students, teachers, tutors, ministry partners, and all our members and friends that you may grant us a spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may know what is the hope to which you have called us, the riches of your glorious inheritance, and the immeasurable greatness of your power for us who believe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this nation and for all the nations of the world. We pray for those whom we have elected to public office, especially Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, our legislative and judicial institutions, our local governments, and all in authority, that they may have wisdom to choose what serves the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of war and violence, especially in the Ukraine, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Haiti, and other areas where there is turmoil 
that violence may cease and peace be restored. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, and for those involved in rescue and recovery efforts. May your presence be manifest in the midst of this tragedy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially James, Sandy, the Brayback family, Ron, Terry, Marianne, Brock, Barbara, Deborah, Mona, all who are on our prayer list, the elderly, those who live alone, the dying, the grieving, and all who minister to them, that they may be strengthened by the presence of Christ as the sign of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We celebrate the gifts of life and love that you provide to us, especially with those who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Ed, John, Val, Nancy Lee, Raymond, and others, and with those celebrating their anniversaries, Raymond and Sophia, John and Mary Jo, and others. May their deepest hearts find strength in the hope that what you have begun to do in their lives will be brought to its fullness by our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks and pray for those with whom we share our daily lives, our families, friends, and neighbors, that we may all be strengthened and sustained by your presence with us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, that they may rest in peace. May we wait in hope for the promise of resurrection with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. At this point, we may add our intercession or thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. Omniscient God, you know our thoughts and needs better than we ourselves. Accept the prayers which we now offer and strengthen us to do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. unfamiliar faces. 
uh, and some familiar faces, but who have not been here for a long, for a while. So welcome, welcome. Uh, so if you are new and this is your first time, and you're quite sure not many of us know your name, we would be honored if you tell us who your name is and where you're visiting from. Anyone here? Yes, stand up if you are able and tell us. Charlie will be leading that. I think it will be exciting. The adult Sunday school, I am calling your attention to this because it's speaking to the to some of the the theme in the gospel reading today, the difficult words of Jesus. So if you are not satisfied with my attempt to make sense of those reading, come to the class because somebody more qualified. Amy, uh, Jill Levine, Professor of New Testament at Vanderbilt Divinity School, who will be teaching us on the difficult words of Jesus uh, two weeks from now. And uh, talking about help that God has given us the Holy Spirit, we are now doing the Holy Spirit and we have two sessions left. So you have two or one session left. So you are welcome to join us next Sunday, or borrow the DVD when we are done. By the way, all the classes we do, when we are done, the DVDs are available. Most of the adult Sunday school is on DVD, and once we are done with it, you can borrow it and watch it on your own. Uh, I think everything else is, uh, uh, is self-explanatory. Uh, one that's not in the bulletin is that next Sunday we will have a baptism. And that baptism will be of an adult, which is not very uh, common in the Episcopal Church. We are very familiar with baptizing babies, but this time we'll baptize an adult. So come and join us. This is uh, an adult who grew up in the Jewish tradition, and as uh, she has uh, learned about the, the words of Jesus, uh, she doesn't despise uh, the, what she has learned. She actually says Jesus brings something more, and I like it uh, to, to have that more. And so she will be baptized as uh, her um, public expression that she believes in this Jesus 
who came, by the way, first for the Jews, and then the rest of us were <laughs> grafted, as, a, as a Paul says, into that faith. So it will be an exciting time, as we also get an opportunity to affirm um, uh, what we ourselves believe. Uh, I think that's it. Anything else? Yes. Just left out again, but Wednesday, February 22nd, is uh, Ash Wednesday. We have service at noon and at 6 p.m. No, 12, 11, sorry, it's not there. Oh. 11.30. Yeah. Yes, 11.30. 11 and 6 p.m.? Yes, and 6 p.m. And I need volunteers for uh, lector, ushers, and Len. Yes. yes. So if you can do any of those, if you please let me know, I would appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Pat and her ministry. We, it would be chaotic without her making those arrangements. And uh, so thank you for all you do. She actually just volunteered to add another important ministry, and that's the Ministry of Hospitality. She'll be coordinating our 1030 hospitality and uh, any other special events. So she's just so sweet. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, so, oh, I forgot one thing. My neighbor is here. Maxwell is a wonderful, wonderful neighbor. Uh, everyone knows Maxwell. Maxwell, raise your hand. <laughs> Maxwell is my next door neighbor and is a wonderful pastor. I don't know whether I shared the story. I, I was fishing and did I share that story? Yeah. Yes, I shared that. Some of you were not there, let me share it again. I was fishing. <laughs> then I couldn't catch anything. And then he went. Uh, he came, he threw it, and called something. He said, here, this is you. <laughs> claim, claim it. I said, sure, I claim it. I claimed it. I took it home. My wife was happy that I caught a fish just for Max. <laughs> He's a wonderful neighbor. But, uh, uh, that's really christ -like. Jesus doing things for us and sometimes claiming credit for things Jesus or the Holy Spirit does. So... Thank you, Maxwell, for demonstrating that Christ-like uh, character. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
offer this Eucharist in thanksgiving to God for all the blessings of our lives, for loving us even before we knew Him, but more so an intercession on behalf of those who are struggling, remembering especially the victims of the hurricane, of the earthquake, sorry, in Turkey and Syria, and praying that God in His mercy may come to rescue them. It's working just not very well. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. And ask you thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, Proclaim the glory of your name. Father, 
now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are going to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them and remember it that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Christ the bread of heaven, the body of Christ the bread of heaven, the body of Christ the bread of heaven. Lord Christ, Lord the cup of salvation.
us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you already.